Welcome to the Sunsless Platform demo. Today I would like to show you what we can all do with the data reported by these little battery-powered devices. So let's take a look. The starting point of the platform is the asset map. It's the place in the platform where you can see at the blink of an eye where all your assets are located right now. Let's now zoom in a little bit to a particular location. We're going to focus on the site in Belgium. As you can see, we have a site near the Ghent Harbour and where 47 assets are located. You can see that we've uploaded an indoor map, which really helps to understand inside large industrial plants where your assets are. You can also see that we have drawn on the map geozones. And geozones are the areas of interest for your specific processes. Let's now look at a specific asset. And you see the sidebar shows you the key information elements on that specific asset. A more expansive view is the asset status page. Again, the location is repeated on that page and we see an identity card of the asset. And so you can fully customize the name, the icon, the color, etc. You can also see that we've allocated tags to it and there's a tag JIG which indicates the type of asset and there's a second tag production flow, which is used to indicate in which type of flow it's active. We can see some information related to the battery. We keep a lot of historical data as well. And let's take a look at the month of November. And so we can see that the asset has traveled from the UK to Belgium to a facility in Germany as well. Now, that same information is also available at the more abstract level, at the GeoZone visit level. Same type of information, but instead of showing you the individual locations or the individual journey segments, we're showing it at the level of entering and exiting a geozone. Now, for example, we can see that the 1st of November, we entered the main warehouse in Germany and that we left it on the 6th of November. And we can see that the next location was the factory in Belgium. Now, let's leave a bit the individual asset level and focus a bit at a specific geozone. Now, here we navigate to the Belgium factory geozone, and we can see that at this moment there are 47 assets within that geozone. We can see the split up by tag. Now, all the assets uh, both share the same tag. Uh, we can also see, and let me zoom out a bit uh, to the level of an, uh, well, a year is maybe a lot, uh, but a month, and we can see how the number of assets in that geozone has evolved. Uh, similarly, we can see for the month of November the dwell times of the assets, how long the assets stayed within that geozone. And so we can see a good number of assets stayed below three days in that geozone. These type of views are very useful to identify outliers in your process, uh, assets which are stuck somewhere uh, and which should be moving, but they aren't. Uh, a variation of that view uh, is focusing on the in-out transitions. Uh, it's showing basically for every day how many assets entered the geozone and how many assets exited the geozone. Uh, now, in all cases, uh, you can just click a bar on the chart and then you get uh, at the bottom the detail uh, to which you can uh, navigate uh, again. And finally, uh, we can also visualize the flows between the geozones. Uh, so we can see that from the factory in Belgium, there were in that period, uh, there was one transition to the main warehouse in uh, Germany. Now, we also provide analytics at the fleet level. And so let me give you a look here at the uh, month of September. You can see for the month of September, 95.2% of the assets was at least used once. We also see that the average utilization was one hour and 54 minutes. These types of metrics are very useful in case uh, you're renting your assets or your assets, uh, you're on, under pressure to get more assets with these metrics, you can prove that your assets are probably underutilized uh, or that there is a more optimal, may, optimal way to use these assets. The next type of visualization is flows. Uh, so a flow is something where you define wh and where you define what's the typical pattern your assets should follow. Uh, in this case, we've defined a flow where assets go from a main warehouse, they're outbound, they go to a customer, they return, and optionally, they could go into the repair. Yeah. So 
Once you've defined that flow and we provide reporting on how many assets are on which step of the flow at this moment, but we also provide a historic view. And so the historic view shows you for every timestamp how many assets are in which part of the process. Like with everything, you can just click through and see who is that exactly. Similarly to the GeoZones, there is also a flow uh, transition view. With all of the things I've shown you so far, uh, it's, it's really nice uh, to be able to see all that data, uh, both at the level of an individual asset and at the level of uh, the fleet. However, it's undoable if you have a large fleet uh, to look at that data on a daily basis, dive into it and see what's wrong. Now, this is where alerts come into the picture. Uh, so alerts or rules which you can define yourself and uh, we provide a rich catalog of alerts uh, and actually the goal of alerts is that they will warn you whenever something is not according to your defined rules or processes so instead of having to look around for issues just look to the alert dashboards and these are the things you should fix uh, i don't want to dive in too much into the administrative aspects of the platform uh, but as you can see here uh, there is a very rich catalog of alerts which can be defined uh, to give an example and uh, we could create an alert definition too long in the geo zone uh, i give it uh, uh, too long in belgium and we can choose to which assets it applies uh, let's do it by the tag uh, all the foldable boxes uh, which geo zone uh, factory belgium and we would select it let's take the reception area what's the maximum duration etc right you can look at the active alerts and the active alerts or the alerts which are active today but we keep also track of the historical alerts and so at any given moment you can go look back into history see what was wrong but you can also see whether the number of alerts over time is increasing or decreasing and which should give you an indication whether your process is improving Next, uh, we provide a rich set of reports, uh, similar principle to the alert rules. Uh, there's a rich catalog of reports uh, which you can choose from. You define your report, you give a scope, uh, you can choose uh, to run it now or you can choose to run it, let's say, for a time period and run it on a monthly basis. Uh, there are many notifications option available either you go back to the platform and you pick it up here or you can get notifications either through email or through api as well right. now the final part of the platform and this is really where everything comes together is dashboards dashboards are basically views which you as a user can define and where you pick and choose widgets from all over the platform and basically from all the entities which you've seen and you bring it together in one specific view which is relevant to your specific process. Now, let me go a bit into edit mode. And so we've created here a dashboard comparing two factories. And we're looking at the factory in France versus the factory in Belgium. And now, as you can see, uh, let's say change this to the factory in the UK. And we can change that widget, we can change the location, we can add new widgets. And so you see there's quite a catalog of widgets available. Uh, imagine I want to see for a geo zone, uh, the factory BE, the ready for pickup area, and I want to see a map uh, of that area. Uh, voila. This is one specific uh, dashboard. You can create as many as you want specific to every use case, and you can also choose how you want to share that. Uh, a dashboard can be specific for you as a user, but you can also share it within your organization as well. Uh, another dashboard example is one focusing at assets at the customer location. Uh, so a customer location, how have we defined that? And uh, these are geo zones, which have the geo zone tag customer. We've also selected all the active alerts related to customer deliveries. Uh, it's again, another filter a map view rendering only the assets which are currently at customers and finally all the assets which are currently on their way towards customers. I think that concludes our quick demo of the platform and so we haven't focused at all at any administrative aspects and what we also didn't look at was anything related to device management but these are topics which would deserve their own session. 
I hope this demonstration was useful and it has given you an idea of all the things we can do in the Senseless platform. If you would like to know more, I would encourage you to consult our online documentation or watch any of our other training movies. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.